Hello, welcome to the Gym RPG Show. So today I came across some pretty interesting information about how Nvidia and their AIB partners do the silicon lottery and their bidding process for their GPUs. And there's also some information about the distribution between the good chips and the average chips of the RTX 3080 and the 3090. So let's get into that information straight away. So today, Lafrit David wrote, 30% of RTX 3080 will have an average bin, and 70% of the 3080 will have a good bin. And he also says that of that 70% that will have a good bin, 10% will be really good. Now, Copite 7 Kimi writes in response, uh, poor Samsung process gives some chips a weak frequency. Nothing can do except to release a new driver for balancing it. So that's interesting that he says a new driver can actually um, provides a little bit better performance. Now Lefrit David didn't actually get these numbers out of his ass. He got them from Igor's lab who wrote an article about the binning and quality scattering of the GeForce RTX 3080 and the 3090. He writes about the binning in practice. So he writes that there are two methods that the AIB partners actually use. So the first one is the 50-50 method. So essentially the card is already finished, it's got the cooler on top and they have to do a burn in and function test anyway for the card. and that will determine what the actual chip provides and then only then they will just put it into different boxes. So I think in the past, you know, EVGA and those type of manufacturers, they had the same cooler on the card and then you'd have different factory overclocks on them. And so that's what this is um, talking about. There's another method which he says, um, basically they do some tests on a small sample of chips and then they are able to use that information to then go on and predict um, what other chips will also provide. And they say that's probably how Gigabyte do it with their Aorus and Aorus Extreme. So they have some really, really good cards and then later on they will produce the WinForce and other cards that they also have because uh, once they've got enough for the Aorus and Aorus Extreme, then they'll just put the other GPUs on the WinForce. So it's still likely that you could get a good chip for the WinForce, but they will pre-select all of their good chips for the Aorus and Aorus Extreme. Now, in this article, he also talks about the distribution of the good chips versus the average chips. And here he writes that internally, binning is usually divided into three stages. There is the OK bin zero, the good bin one, and the really good bin two. The sources speak almost unanimously of an average of up to 30% of chips with bin 0, approximately 60% with bin 1, and only 10% with bin 2 for the RTX 3080, which is still good for a short production period and actually speaks for Samsung. So I think with the bin 0 average chips, those chips will probably only provide maybe between 0 to 5% overclocking headroom, so I don't think you're going to get any overclocking out of them. Uh, I've had one of these chips before and it was not great. And yeah, it was a launch card. Uh, the other cards will probably be average to good performance. So uh, the bin one will be like maybe 10% overclocking headroom. And then of course, you're probably going to get the really high overclocking headroom chips in bin two. And they could be like, you know, maybe 20% or more. Now, Eagles Lab also writes here, by the way, most of the custom models intended for press sampling are of course the top dogs of the respective manufacturers and thus bin 2. You should have this in mind because Nvidia's Founders Edition is no longer a cheap reference card but rather a highly sophisticated product. So I think this is really interesting and super important when you go and watch a press review uh, because they will have a press sample. So uh, review sites like uh, Gamers Nexus, Jay's Two Cents, and that sort of thing. They will have a bin two product uh, when they go and do their review. So you'll see in their review, they'll have the stock uh, performance, and also later on, they'll have the overclocking performance. And I think some people may be misled that when they get their card, they will also be able to do that same overclocking headroom. I think this is really important for people to know that uh, the distribution of good chips versus average chips is 30-70. So there is a um, 3 in 10 chance that you're not going to be able to perform this type of overclocking. 
so I think that's just something important to note. And I think people should also consider watching reviews of smaller sites or smaller channels uh, because they may actually go out and buy their card and then that way they may probably get an average card that won't be able to overclock well and that will give worst case scenario for this card. And I think one final thing here to note is that if you buy a launch GPU, uh, there's a high possibility that you're just going to get an average GPU, particularly if you pay the base price. So um, if you wait like three or four months down the track, um, where the manufacturing process matures a little bit and then there's the possibility of getting a uh, better performing chip. Uh, so I think that's something also to consider when you think about buying a launch GPU. All right, so that about does it for this one. Make sure you click the like button and also to subscribe to this channel uh, for more gaming videos like this and I'll see you in the next one.